Reading the Times for Sunday, February 2nd, 2020. While stained in history, Trump will emerge from trial triumphant and unshackled. If Mr. Trump does win a second term, it would be the first time an impeached president had the opportunity to serve five years after his trial, and Mr. Trump's critics worry that he would feel unbound. He's going to be, it's going, he's going to be Trump to the third power now. He's not going to be ex, exponential Trump because that's not enough Trump. It's going to be Trump to the third power. But in that, Mr. Scaramucci said, are the seeds of Mr. Trump's own downfall because he could go so far that he finally alienates enough of the public to lose. The one person who can absolutely beat Trump is Trump, he said. As new coronavirus spreads, China's old habit habits delayed fight. Is SARS coming again? In the middle of the night, officials from the health authority in the central city of Wuhan summoned Dr. Li, demanding to know why he had shared the information. A reconstruction of the crucial seven weeks before the appearance of the first symptoms in early December and the government's decision to lock down the city based on two dozen interviews with Wuhan residents, doctors and officials on government statements and on Chinese media reports points to decisions that delayed a concerted public health offense offensive. The official reflex for suppressing discomforting information now appears to be cracking as officials at various levels seek to shift blame for the government's response. Democratic candidates focus on all-consuming hunger to unseat Trump. With Republicans ready to acquit President Trump of two impeachment charges next week, the nation's political table has been set for 2020. Congress will not remove him from office despite the wishes of many liberals, leaving the fate of Mr. Trump to the November general election and the candidate nominated by Democrats in the coming months. At Mr. Sanders' Sioux City field office, his campaign was distributing a pamphlet that reads, an effective leader with a toughness to defeat Donald Trump. Addressing supporters on Saturday in Indianola, Iowa, some of whom wore Bernie beats Trump buttons. Mr. Sanders argued that his mammoth volunteer effort in Iowa presaged the sort of organization he could build this fall. We are going to knock on 500,000 doors in the month of January and, and the first two days of February, he said, adding, that is what we need to do in order to win against Trump vowing to bring millions of people into the political process who normally do not vote. Mr. Sanders warned that Democrats will lose in a low turnout election. Mr. Biden's, Mr. Biden, single-mindedly focus on electability also stands out as he goes further than his rivals in attempting to replace political inspiration with cold calculus about cobbling together the 270 electoral college votes needed to defeat Mr. Trump. Angels in Hell, the culture of misogyny inside Victoria's Secret. One model, Andy Muiz, said Victoria's Secret had stopped hiring her for its fashion shows after she rebuffed Mr. Razek's advances. Criticism of Victoria's Secret anachronistic marketing went viral in 2018 when Mr. Razek expressed no interest in casting plus-size and transsexual models in the fashion show. Alyssa Miller, who had been on occasion an occasional Victoria's Secret model, described Mr. Razek as someone who exuded toxic masculinity. What if Brexit works? 
Britain's departure from the European Union on Friday drew a mournful reaction from many people who have long viewed Brexit as consigning their country, once the vanguard of Europe, to a future of economic mediocrity and geopolitical irrelevance. Most mainstream studies predict Brexit will cut the rate of Britain's growth by depriving it of gains in of gains to gross domestic product it would otherwise have had. Those lost gains could amount to between 1.2% and 4.5% of its gross domestic product, depending on the terms of Britain's exit from the European Union. Voters in the Midlands and the north of England, where many districts abandoned the Labour Party to embrace Mr. Johnson's promise to get Brexit done have a very different vision of what Brexit means from the free market evangelists in London who want to remake Britain as a kind of Singapore on Thames, an enclave with little regulation and low taxes. Venezuela's capital is booming. Is this the end of the revolution? With the country's economy derailed by years of mismanagement and corruption, then pushed to the brink of collapse, by American sanctions, Mr. Maduro was forced to relax the economic restraints that once defined his socialist government and provided the foundation for his political legitimacy. Under the new economy, Mr. Maduro's supporters among the Venezuelan elite are living handsomely on business deals and stashes of hard currency, which American sanctions prevented them from spending abroad. At the 1956 lounge, the teenagers and their parents sipped champagne and discussed coming yacht trips. Tired of waiting for political change, the upper and middle classes opposed to Mr. Maduro have tapped into the foreign savings set aside during Venezuela's oil bonanza of the 2000s, when the government gave citizens billions of dollars at highly subsidized exchange rates. Modi's budget offers few solutions to revive India's weak economy. India is stuck in its biggest economic slump in more than a decade, but Prime Minister Narendra Modi's budget for the new year, unveiled on Saturday, offers only small steps to try to create a turnaround. What the government planning a national exercise to make all Indians prove their citizenship, the demonstrators say they are defending India's secular roots. Budgets in India have always been aspirational documents packed with goodies to appeal to different sections of voters in the country. Indonesia deports U.S. journalists jailed over visa issues. An American journalist who was jailed in Indonesia for allegedly violating the terms of his visa has been deported and was expected to arrive in New York on Saturday. Authorities should be thanking Jacobson for his environmental work, not punishing him for it. Mr. Jacobson was not working as a journalist during his stay in Indonesia. Said, Mr. Jacobson um, said his lawyer, Aro Nugroho, journalists who work in Indonesia are required to obtain a journalist visa and failing to do so can be prosecuted as a crime. With Brexit official Britain start a Brexitus from Brussels. For Britons back home, the formal departure from the European Union on Friday means very little in practice as the country will obey European Union rules until the end of the year. Rupert Lowe, a European lawmaker for the Brexit Party who campaigned for Britain to leave the bloc, said he saw the European Union as nothing more than a protectionist racket designed to destroy the nation-state. European officials are generally well paid, and most of those working in European Union institutions have been told they will not lose their jobs. Iraq names new prime minister who praises bravery of protesters. Iraq's president stepped in to appoint a new prime minister after the parliament failed to do so for two months, leaving the country largely rudderless at a time of multiple political crises. Since the toppling of Saddam Hussein, Iraq has a political power-sharing agreement, whereby the prime minister comes from the country's 
Shiite Muslim majority. The Speaker of the Parliament is from the Sunni Muslim minority. And the President is of Kurdish ethnicity. So that all three main ethnic and religious groups are represented. After the toppling of Saddam Hussein, he began to align himself with his cousin, Iyad Alawi, who was the interim prime minister in 2004, and eventually joined Iraqia, his cousin's political party. Greece's answer to migrants, a floating barrier, is called a disgrace. The potential effectiveness of the barrier has also been widely questioned, and the center-right daily newspaper, Kathy Marini, dismissed the idea in an editorial on Friday as wishful thinking. Moreover, the main opposition party, the leftist Syriza, has condemned the floating barrier plan as a disgrace and an insult to humanity. The authorities aim to install a 1.7 mile barrier between the Greek and Turkish coastlines that would rise more than 19 inches above the water and display flashing lights, according to a description posted on a government website this past week by Greece's defense ministry. Greece's defense minister, Nikolaos Panagiotopoulos, told Greek radio on Thursday that he hoped the floating barrier would act as a deterrent to smugglers, similar to a barbed wire fence that the Greek authorities built along the northern land border with Turkey in 2012. Amnesty International's research director for Europe, Massimo Moratti, condemned the proposal as an alarming, alarming escalation in Greek effort, an alarming escalation in the Greek government's ongoing effort to make it difficult as possible for asylum seekers and refugees to arrive on the shores. He warned that it could lead to more danger to those desperately seeking safety. The head of Amnesty International's chapter in Greece, Gabriel Sakelaridis, questioned whether the Greek authorities would respond to an emergency signal issued by a boat stopped at the barrier. U.S. tweets support for Iranian chess official, but ban wouldn't let her in. Aaron Testa, a spokesman for the State Department, declined to say whether the tweets about Ms. Bayat signaled a change in how the administration viewed cases like hers and other Iranians who could be considered dissidents in their country. The picture appeared to show her without the hijab, and Ms. Bayat said Iranian media were accusing her of causing a problem for me, accusing her of flouting Iranian law. Ms. Bayat asked to be interviewed by New York Times by email because she wanted to answer questions carefully and make sure my answers won't cause a problem for me or my family. The tweets from the embassies also linked an article about Ms. Bayat on Share America, a website run by the State Department that describes itself as a platform for communicating American foreign policy worldwide. The article described how Iranian women continue to strive for equality, and noted the case of Kimia Alizade, a Olympic bronze medalist winner who recently announced she was defecting from Iran. China increasingly walled off as countries seek to stem coronavirus. Vietnam on Saturday became the latest country to try to close itself off from the world's most populous country, barring all flights from and to China. Vietnam, China's neighbor along its southern border, joined Singapore and Mongolia in essentially shutting off its borders to China, barring all flights coming from mainland China, Hong Kong, and Macau until May 1st. According to the Federal Aviation Administration, Hong Kong halved the number of flights from China, shutting down rail service to mainland China, and also limited visas to the semi-autonomous region, in a move that has prompted criticism from trade unions, including hospital workers, some of whom have voted to strike. Coronavirus thwarts business travelers who need to be in the room. As the director of an industrial parts supplier in Toronto, Mr. Reichter does a lot of business in China. On Friday, Delta Airlines United Airlines and American Airlines canceled all their flights to China 
and the Trump administration said it would place restrictions on travelers, giving companies no choice but to postpone business trips. It, it's, it's just going to put more time into it, and, and time is money! China is not the only global business hub that is increasingly off-limits to traveling business people because of the coronavirus. Why Jill Biden is taking time off to help her husband get a job. Over their 42 years of marriage, Dr. Biden has been by turns Mr. Biden's greatest champion and a hesitant political spouse, committed to supporting their career, his career just as he has embraced hers, but protective of her family and her own identity, and keenly aware of the costs of presidential campaigns. While Mr. Biden often flies on private planes and speaks from behind rope lines, Dr. Biden is campaigning closer to the ground. In October, she regaled attendees at a Florida fundraiser about the indignities of campaign travel. At several recent campaign stops, Dr. Biden has earnestly asked voters how she could get them on board with Mr. Biden, even giving out her campaign email address. How will the winner of the Iowa caucuses be chosen? Here's what you should know. The eventual nominee will be the candidate who wins 1,991 delegates, a simple majority. At the Democratic National Convention and the state delegates determine the national delegates. The Associated Press has said that although it will report all three numbers, it will declare a winner in Iowa based on the number of state delegates each candidate wins. Carol Hunter, the executive direct editor of the Des Moines Register, said the newspaper plans to report out the first alignment, final alignment, and state delegate equivalents, but will determine the winner by state delegate equivalents. A spokeswoman for Fox News said the network would determine the winner of the caucuses based on who wins the most state equ delegate equivalents. We're, we're playing to win, and, and this year more than any other, Democratic voters are, are looking for a nominee who, who knows how to win. Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota. The number that matters for the national delegate allocation is the state delegate equivalents. So that's the true metric of the Iowa caucuses, and we build the campaign to maximize our strengths in those delegates. Norm Sturzenbach, who leads Ms. Klobuchar's caucus strategy, said at a Bloomberg News roundtable in Des Moines on Thursday. Rivals target Sanders in final push towards Iowa caucuses. The Sanders campaign was also facing some blowback on Saturday after one of its most high-profile supporters, Representative Rashida Tlaib, urged a crowd to boo Mrs. Clinton on Friday after she was critical of Mr. Sanders in a podcast. The rekindling of fights from 2016 when many Sanders supporters were reluctant to unify around Mrs. Clinton, the party nominee, provided an opening for a line of attack on Saturday from Pete Buttigieg, one of the leading moderates opposed uh, moderate opponents to Mr. Sanders. If, if, if Sanders got the nomination, he'd need the same six, 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 66 million votes. His campaign may not know that that's how you beat Mr. Trump, but, but voters do. With polls showing a highly competitive Iowa race, no Democrat has shown an effective way to take on Mr. Sanders, the Vermont senator who is now in his second presidential run and is leading some recent Iowa polls. Des Moines Register poll of Iowa caucus goers abruptly shelved. The results were held back after the Buttigieg campaign said an Iowa supporter received a poll phone call from an operator working for the polling operation, but that the name of the former mayor of South Bend, Indiana, was not listed on the menu of options. Ms. Selzer called the cancellation heart-wrenching. Because of the stellar reputation of the poll and the wish to always be thought of that way, the heart-wrenching decision was made not to release the poll, she said in a statement on Saturday night. Candidates crisscrossed the state Saturday 
several of them targeting Mr. Sanders, who was leading in the last register poll several weeks ago, and also recently topped a New York Times Siena College poll last week. Fact checking Bernie Sanders before the Iowa caucuses. Before the first votes are cast in the Democratic presidential contest, the New York Times reviewed statements Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont has made promoting his signature Medicare for All proposal, highlighting his long-held opposition to military intervention and arguing that he can work across the aisle. Mr. Sanders is correct that surveys show that a majority of Democratic voters support Medicare for All, but Ms. Woodruff is correct that other options to improve the health care system have polled better. A year later, when Iraq expelled American weapons inspectors, Mr. Sanders said, though he hoped to avoid violence, the, the, the bombing of, of selected military targets in Iraq uh, uh, certainly remains, remains an option. In October 1998, Mr. Sanders voted for the Iraq Liberation Act, a bill that made, made the, the previously unstated policy of, of promoting reme, regi, re, re, regime change in Iraq official declared policy, according to the Congressional Research Service. It would have been nice if Bernie was here. People went to see Bailey Warren today, Mr. Elliott said, referring to Miss Warren's golden retriever, who had been headlining events around Iowa with the senator's husband, Bruce Mann, in her absence. Pat Reinard, the founder and editor of Iowa Starting Line, an online political publication in Des Moines, said that the strange state of affairs had led to some journalistic rearranging, more features and less coverage of events. Justin Bruin, the campaign manager, told the assembled reporters how they were compensating for the senator's absence by teletown hall-style events, in which the candidates speak to thousands of voters at a time over speakerphone, or at least while talking into the void of a laptop while sitting in a small office. Views on impeachment past present at three presidential sites. The two articles of impeachment he faced were for perjury related to his statements about an affair in a civil sexual harassment lawsuit and obstruction of justice. When, when you study the Clinton impeachment with, with Clinton, there's, there's a deposition. There's, there's a tape deposition. There is audio of, of him discussing the impeachment. Mr. Levels, who voted for Hillary Clinton and works for a financial services company, said it was harder to know what was going on in the case of Mr. Trump, given his administration's refusal to produce witnesses and documents. The House Judiciary Committee approved three articles of impeachment against him for abuse of power, obstruction of justice, and contempt of Congress. But the full House never voted to adopt the articles after he resigned, so there was never a Senate trial. Trump campaign and RNC spent $9 million in the fourth quarter, mostly on digital ads. President Trump's campaign and the Republican National Committee together spent more than $9 million on polling digital ads and fees paid to Trump-owned properties in the last three months of 2019, according to filings with the Federal Elections Commission released on Friday. The filings detail how the Trump campaign, the Trump Victory Committee, a third entity called the Trump Makes America Great Again Committee, and the National Party Committee spent their cash from October through the end of December. One of the biggest changes in the last quarter of 2019 was to the compensation of the campaign manager, Brad Parscale, whose company has been paid more than $16 million through the various Trump entities and the National Committee last year, according to the filing. Trump threw weighty refugee decisions to local government with painful results. As long as the Springfield mayor doesn't opt in, I think refugee communities will feel just a little bit welcome, a little bit less welcome. 
The vague wording of the executive order also caused confusion among refugee resettlement officials who questioned which local official had the power to consent to the State Department. Michael A. Fenton, the Springfield Councilman who introduced the resolution, resolution to welcome refugees, said he had been fielding calls from residents demanding the city let them go to the suburbs. Mr. Abbott argued Texas has carried more than its share. But more government officials who responded to the executive order have decided to accept refugees into their states and counties, including those dominated by Republicans. Last month, Mr. Hitchinson testified before the state, his state legislature, to defend allowing refugees into Arkansas, taking with him a Congolese business owner and an Afghan refugee who assisted the American military. Former Coast Guard lieutenant is sentenced to 13 years in prison on gun and drug charges. In a court filing, they said Mr. Hassan was inspired by racist murderers, stockpiled assault weapons, studied violence, and intended to exact retribution on minorities and those he considered traitors. Prosecutors said that Mr. Hassan had identified as a white nationalist for more than 30 years and had, in writing, advocated focused violence in order to establish a white homeland. In a court filing, he asked that Mr. Hazan, who had been detained since his arrest nearly a year ago, be sentenced to time served, followed by three years of supervised release. Mr. Hazan has acknowledged in court filings that from at least March 2016 to early February, 2019, he ordered at least 4,650 pills of tramadol, an opioid, and consumed the vast majority of them, usually daily, while working at Coast Guard headquarters in Washington. Man faces a proposed $13 million fine for racist robocalls, U.S. says. The man, Scott D. Rhodes, whose anti-hate groups say is a who anti-hate group say is a white supremacist and runs the website Road to Power what hey, that's clever was apparently responsible for more than six thousand robocalls in two thousand eighteen with the intent to cause harm. The FCC said Thursday the commission said that in addition to Iowa and Virginia, Mr Rhodes targeted people in California, Georgia, Florida and Idaho with the robocalls. The commission said Mr. Rhodes was also responsible for 766 robocalls in October 2018, targeting Andrew Gillum, who was the first black nominee for Florida governor from a major party. NOAA leaders privately disowned agency's rebuke of scientists who contradicted Trump. In response to one angry scientist, both Neil Jacobs, then the acting director of NOAA, and Tim Kaladut, a retired Navy admiral who is an assistant secretary of commerce for oceans and atmosphere at NOAA, emailed responses privately walking back the statement. Mr. Jacobs wrote that the, the, the forecast official did the right thing to calm the nerves of the citizens, and Mr. Kaladut in the clearest indication yet that the statement rebuking National Weather Service scientists came from political overseers, assured the scientists that Mr. Jacobs' reply served as a sincere acknowledgement of a, of a news release we did, we did not approve or support, and OAA did not immediately respond to a request for comment about the email. The email showed top NOAA officials knew full well that the map Mr. Trump presented had been altered, even as days later the agency issued an unsigned statement essentially chastising the Birmingham forecasters for having contradicted the president. We work names veteran real estate executive as new chief. We work the troubled operator of shared office space has named Sandeep Mathrani, a senior executive at the commercial real estate company Brookfield Properties, a senior executive at the commercial real estate company Brookfield Properties, as its new chief executive. 
In a statement, Mr. Mathrani said WeWork had redefined how people and companies approach work with an innovative platform, exceptionally talented team, and significant potential if we stick to our shared values and maintain our members first focus. <laughs> the appointment of Mr. Mathrani, who is Set to start on February 18th would be an important part of WeWork's attempt to build a business that could sustain itself in the fast-growing but highly competitive market of flexible office space. Marcello Clari, a senior SoftBank executive, became WeWork's executive chairman and has overseen has been overseeing the company's overhaul, which involves pulling back from certain markets, selling off non-core businesses, in finding new ways to finance its operations. Juan Guiado takes his appeal to Venezuelans in Florida. Mr. Trump is spending the weekend at his Mar-a-Lago estate in Palm Beach. And while Mr. Guiado, who expects to return to Venezuela in the coming days, has made it clear he wants to meet with the president, nothing yet has materialized. Former Vice President Joseph R. Biden Jr., who is seeking the Democratic presidential nomination, weighed in with a statement after Mr. Guiado's speech, calling it stern, and referring to Mr. Maduro as a dictator. For all of Mr. Trump's early support, the administration's failure to achieve any real change in Venezuela has prompted speculation in both parties. There could be a backlash against Mr. Trump ahead of the presidential election in November if Mr. Maduro arrested Mr. Guado when he returned home. It could increase support for the opposition leader both in and out of Venezuela. A cancer patient stole groceries worth $109.63. She was sentenced to 10 months. Last week, a judge sentenced a woman, Ashley Lenser, to at least 10 months in prison, a punishment that Mr. Fetterman called overly harsh, an emblemic of a flawed criminal justice system. Ms. Menser's mother, Stephanie Bashore, said that her 36-year-old daughter had advanced uterine cancer as well as cervical cancer and needs surgery to remove her uterus and the tissue around it. Without naming Ms. Menser, the grocery chain said that a woman had left a Weiss Markets store near Lebanon two years ago without paying for items in her cart. Coronavirus and the, pande and the panic epidemic. Don't associate with people who've recently arrived from the infected area around the megacity of Wuhan. People are walking around with loudspeakers blaring out warnings against the virus. For despite their mistrust of the system, people overall are going along with the lockdown. The Super Bowl ads you won't see this year. Attention, if, if you or a loved one received a diagnosis of chronic traumatic encephalopathy or CTE, you might be entitled to financial compensation. CTE is caused by repeated head injury and li linked to playing professional football. Please don't wait. Call the 1555 Stop NFL for a free legal consultation and, and claims packet. I, I'm I'm Deval Patrick. I don't I don't know why I entered this race. I have no why no idea why I'm still here. But, but I spent all my campaign funds on this ad, and and I approve this message for for anyone who kept up with the impeachment and follows the primary. A regular can of beer probably doesn't cut it. Introducing Budweiser Super Alcoholic Beer with 30% ABV. Please drink it responsibly. You deserve it. Have you have you ever watched Star Wars film and thought, wow, lightsabers are cool, but but are they absorbent in introducing lightsaber tampax? When it's that time of the month, you can fight through cramps and bleeding like a real Jedi. A need to escape? Yamaha's new premium cello case, which can fit up to three adult humans, is perfect for any getaway. Whether you're a magician, an auto executive fleeing Japan, or, or just looking for a new life, Yamaha's newest product can help you run for it. Ever, ever wonder why... Ever wonder what Amazon employees think of your most private conversations with a new Echo surveillance state? Amazon employees will communicate with you directly and, and let you know what they really think of you. Did you seriously ask Alexa what 12 plus 14 is? is an Amazon employee assigned to you will mock you endlessly for whatever you say in your home. 
Mayor Pete's Gay Reckoning. Absolute disagreement with the buddy gig opposition to Medicare for All. If you have a different view, but don't suggest that. Absolutely disagree with Buddy Gig's opposition to Medicare for All. If you have a different view, but don't suggest that he should support it because he's gay. What does Buddy Gig's being gay tell you? That he has a trepidation and caution in him? That he stayed in the closet all those years, but he has courage too, enough to pursue the presidency despite the inevitable spotlight on him as a novelty. In any case, he said, I usually have a kind of celebrity blindness. A gay man who doesn't twinkle at the stars around him. Yep, our creator makes us in all shapes and stripes. For better or worse, Trump will get his favorite thing on Super Bowl, a Sunday. Of all the surreal things I've seen during Super Bowl telecast in my lifetime, the wardrobe malfunction left shark, whatever in the world they're doing to poor Mr. Peanut, I'm not sure anything feels more discordant with the way we live today than the fact that Bill O'Reilly interviewed Barack, President Barack Obama before two Super Bowls. It's worth noting that friendly backscratching interviews are much more in the spirit of this tradition, like the one before the Super Bowl shuffle. Chicago Bears win in 1986 in Super Bowl XX, in which Tom Brokaw, Brokaw asked Ronald Reagan about his own playing career. Mr. Trump sees the Super Bowl hype as a way to sit down with his friendliest interviewer and speak directly to a mass audience at a time of maximum peril and maximum opportunity. Will someone break out of Iowa who can trounce Trump? Anyone? None of the candidates even bothered to attend the Iowa Biofuel Summit in January. The memory of that trauma may have been what inspired Clinton to recently tell a reporter that nobody likes him. On the ground, the candidates have been diligently trying to look as if they're living in Iowa forever, though none has actually gone so far as to buy a house or transfer kids to Iowa public schools, as one hopeful did in the 2008 cycle. The impeachment drama has been keeping Sanders, Warren, Klobuchar, and Michael Bennett in Washington, where they'd much rather be out of a coffee clash. Or when they'd much rather be out at a coffee clash in Iowa City. Did I just get yanged? Among the party goers on New Year's Eve were Jackie and Dave Farrell, former Bernie Sanders supporters who in a deli who own a deli in Caldwell, New Jersey. Mr. Farrell wore a handmade knitted beanie stitched with the words Yang, Math, Vote, and 2020. Miss Farrell had a pink Yang Gang baseball hat over her blue hair and a copy of the candidate's bestseller, The War on Normal People, in her purse. It's sort of like a gang like a yang gang. Talk to anyone in the yang gang for a few minutes and they'll inevitably tell you how they got yanged. If there's a typical yang voter, it is a former Bernie Sanders supporter who feels Mr. Yang understands the challenges of the 21st century better than a 78-year-old socialist without a single app on his phone. Sesame Street is opening up to Syrian refugees. We're, we're talking about a, a generational scale intervention, just as American Sesame Street teaches counting and the alphabet before deeper literacy and numeracy. The new series called Alan Simpson, or Welcome Sesame, will start with the basics. We, we, we need some kind of comedic foils, but we don't want to do the negative modeling. We, we don't want villains. Oscar the Grouch, for example, was developed in the very early ages of Sesame as a way to represent differences, but a kind of mutual respect. Mr. Cameron explained Jordan Pioneers Productions Company, based in Jordan, collaborated with Sesame Workshop to develop the characters, write scripts, and shoot the episodes. I am 35 and running faster than I ever thought possible. 
the trials where the fastest Americans race for the opportunity to be part of the Olympic team are open to anyone, but to qualify, women have to run a marathon in under two hours and 45 minutes. While distance running in the United States has always attracted white professional women, the sport is growing broader and getting better. Our culture is fixated on youth, on potential, on list of 30 under 30, especially for women who are assigned as assigned a biological clock, whether they believe in it or not. Millennials aren't spending all their money on avocado toast, actually. Digging deeper, we find that the bulk of the financial assets among millennials sits in retirement saving vehicles, such as 401k, to the tune of $6,933 compared with just $3,970 for Generation X. So while Generation X enjoyed a higher overall net worth per capita in 2002 than millennials in 2018, the younger group gets a gold star for retirement preparedness. Millennials' wealth and other kinds of assets fall far short of Generation X's. At a comparable stage in life, Generation X had 2.31 times millennials' real estate wealth per capita, adjusted for inflation. Millennials are doing their part to save for retirement. Our policymakers could be doing more to help them. More money, more problems for democracy. The dinner has attracted attention because Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman, associates of President Trump's personal lawyer, Rudolph Giuliani, took the opportunity to press Mr. Trump to remove Mary Yovanovitch as the American ambassador to Ukraine as part of a plan to make money from natural gas. In Citizens United, the court struck down restrictions on election spending by corporations and unions leaving only flimsy prohibitions on giving the money to a candidate or taking instructions from a candidate. The federal government offers funding to presidential candidates, but the system is virtually defunct because it imposes spending limits and major candidates can raise much more money from private sources. Preserving Historic Buildings Historic preservationists around the country were dismayed that the Times would publish a broadside against preservation based on the complaints of one resident in one Washington historic district who was denied the right to place solar panels on his roof. There is absolutely no way in which historic preservation is only about preserving the lifestyle of the affluent. Historic preservation is about learning how people lived, how they built how they decorated and ate and socialized, of course the requirements that landmarks preservation commissions impose on buildings in historic districts can seem nitpicky, but the preserving but preserving the charm charming character is one of the things that keeps a neighborhood like mine, Greenwich Village, from turning into a generic midtown. She helped a customer in need, then US Bank fired her. To understand how some companies have lost their souls, consider what is happening after U.S. Bank stiffed a customer before Christmas. James had worked at the bank since 2017 and had received numerous commendations and awards that I examined, but the bank paid her no severance. David Palombi, a bank spokesman, told me in an internal investigation that concluded, had concluded James misled her manager to get permission that James could have found other ways to get money to Eugenio, that the $20 came from the manager, and that James previously had disciplinary issues. I found the bank's investigation a whitewash and its explanation to be incoherent, mean-spirited, and contradicted by a series of internal bank messages that I reviewed. Trump unrepentant and unleashed. The Republican Party has now lost whatever control they could exert over this president and oversight they could have. It's gone. The State of the Union is, there is no union. How can there be when one side is petrified of their Godzilla? Senator Chris Murphy, the Connecticut Democrat, dismissed Republicans as a cult of personality around Trump. Democrats are warning 
Republicans that they will be judged harshly by history. Pressing for Bolton's testimony, Val Demings implored Republican senators, aren't, aren't you worried that if left in office, Trump will harm American national security, seek to corrupt the upcoming election, and, and undermine our democracy to further his own personal gain? Don't, don't you want to hear the witnesses and, and see the documents I would give the full story and make it a fair trial where, rather than a mock one? This is the American way. And this is the American story, Demings told the Republican senators as they looked back at her, impassive or impatient. The only way to remove Trump. The mix of expedience and cravenness with which the institutional GOP approached impeachment is no different than the way the institutional GOP behaved during Trump's initial ascent, and it leaves Trump's opposition no worse off than before. So now most of the country thinks the president did something wrong, most of the country thinks Republicans are protecting him, and most of the country is open, entirely open, to voting Trump and the most vulnerable Republican senators out in nine short months. One essential lesson of the Trump era is that likelihoods are not enough. If you want to end the Trump era, the only one thing will suffice. Suffice. What does it mean to have a serious drinking problem? On the World Health Organization's audit quiz, which tests for drinking problems, I scored an 8 out of 40 points, <laughs> making me a medium drinker with a, with a risky pattern. In 2013, the DSM combined the categories. To create an alcohol use disorder, a spectrum ranging from mild to severe based on how much someone drinks. Not, 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 wait, 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 wait. Based on not how much someone drinks. How many of 11 behavioral or psych? I got 10 fingers, but I'll use the toe. Behavioral, psychological symptoms a person has. Well, really can't. What keeps my path is remarkable difference. Drinking and non-drinking me. I'm, I might be drunk. American Dirt has us talking. That's a good thing. We're often told that there are no readers for our immigrant tales, that these kinds of stories about our pain and suffering don't sell well, that immigrant stories have been told enough times, and why can't we write something new? and different, something more marketable. After 26 rejections, I finally got across the publishing border because an African-American editor felt my novel about a Mexican immigrant girl was worthy of being read, that my voice deserved to be heard. After having spent my entire writing career advocating immigrant rights, I appreciate when another writer joins the fight. The publishing industry has changed its opinions of Mexican immigrant stories but not until it was someone from outside our community who had written one. Behind the racial uproar at one of the world's best jazz stations, people who have a conception of what WBGO was in the 70s and 80s may need to rethink some of that in the 2020s, said Tom Thomas, co-chief executive of the Station Resource Group, a national alliance of public radio stations. The music of WGO, the music of WBGO was an indelible part of my childhood, Mayor Baraka wrote in a letter to the chairman of the WGBO, WBGO board this week, urging structural change. Kiana Faircloth arrived at WBGO last fall as a new host of Afternoon Jazz. She had spent 16 years at WPFW, a Washington, D.C. station with the tagline, Devoted to jazz and justice. The divisiveness, divisiveness at the Newark station where she had been winning praise for her social media savvy and her fresh take on modern jazz artists like Micaiah McRaven and Robert Glasper has been palpable for her. How mean went from Game of Thrones to Brooklyn Bars. 
In late 2018, New York State recognized the burgeoning local mead scene and passed the law allowing meaderies to, that use 100% of New York State honey to offer tastings by the glass and to sell their mead to go. Buyers at wine shops used to ask me, what is mead? Now they ask, what kind of mead is it? How is it made? With what? These are sophisticated questions from a discerning audience. Compared to craft beer, there are more than 6,000 breweries in the United States. Mead is relatively niche. At Allwise, Mr. Sprouse and his partner, Matt Kwan, are making their mead with New York State honey. They focus on producing a dry mead that highlights ingredients. How Ola Johnson, fashion designer, spends her Sundays. I'm a little bit... De- I'm a little bit draconian about restricted access to screen time, but but we do let them. That's that's the time of the week that they really get to do their own thing. It's an exciting time for literature. There's so much good stuff out there. Any opportunity to play a game, do a puzzle, or like to I as I like to say a puzzle. Those are the things that our family really loves, and we come together. What we lose by hiring someone to pick our avocados for us. As the city's vacant industrial landscape was giving over to commerce during the last decade or so, the stores that sprang up become enormous venues for destination shopping and a marketer's parlance, which suggests a kind of leisure the experience never provides. As you weave a cart the size of Bermuda, from the plant-based meat section to the detergents aisle, you must work to avoid collision, and not merely with other shoppers or the civilian class, but also with the overwhelming number of Instacart employees, independent contractors who are picking out ripe avocados at Wegmans for people doing something less combative on Sunday. Last spring, Pay Up, an organization of Instacart's gig workers and campaigning for better compensation, published a report titled Delivering Inequality, using 1,400 samples of data supplied by workers across the country. The study found that the average Instacart shopper makes just $7.66 an hour once the cost of mileage and additional payroll tax are accounted for. How a convent on a hill became a luxurious gateway, gateway for history buffs. From a small Native American tribe that has a deep connection to the land there, to George Washington's army, which used the bluffs as a lookout during the Revolutionary War, to the country's oldest Anglican order, which built a convent there. Fort Hill has always changed with the times. Five Fort Hill barrack buildings burned, Mr. Kern said. Her father, Steve Merkel, was an officer in the United States Army, while her mother, Christine Merkel was an officer in the British Army, whose captain general is Queen Elizabeth II. I I usually have to tread carefully. Fourth of July in the Merkel household is always interesting. But the British actually won the battle at Fort Hill, Mr. Merkel said. How private equity buried Payless. The collapse of Payless is more than a story of one discount shoe company that couldn't hack it in a changing business environment. The United States has typically relied on stock and bond markets to determine which companies get money to invest and on independent boards of directors to govern companies. If, if you think the reallocation of jobs and capital and workers to product, more productive use is as important part of how we drive productivity growth and generate higher living standards, so the role of private equity is, is more vital because there, there seems to be Less of that going on in the economy than 20 or 30 years ago. It could also be true that the slump in productivity and dynamism has nothing to do with the revolution and how companies are governed and capital allocated. How to deal with grief at the office. I've tried to spend as much time as possible working from home in order to avoid this anguishing office environment, but he chided me for abusing work-home privileges. There's a massive hole in my heart, and its complete neglect for my feelings is tearing me apart. Nobody likes feeling ignored, but this feels so powerfully suffocating emotionally. Your boss's job is not to 
offer you unconditional comfort and encouragement is to make sure you're doing your job, which is to perform work tasks the way he expects. Now shut your mouth and get back to work. The robots are coming. Prepare for trouble. While AI technology directly threatens existing retail jobs, its downstream impact has created new jobs as well. The number of heavy truck and tractor trailer drivers increased more than 175,000 over the same period, making these two driving jobs among the fastest growing occupations in the United States. A California law that took effect just this month is likely to reclassify main gig workers as employees prompting companies like Uber to consider modifying their apps for California drivers to give them more control over their work. The work diary of Jessica Walsh, designing and whining woman. Work is my passion, and I love that work and life is intertwined. She said, 8.30, Walsh is working on branding, brand strategy, and target audience work for a bank in Vienna, Austria. 4 p.m., wrote client emails, finalized a creative brief, and sent creative direction feedback to our design team on an advertising campaign we're working on. On roofs or in basements, a new way to ice skate. The Central Park Conservancy conservance, conservance, announced in the fall it would have to spend $110 million fixing the Alaska rink, which is actually to 195 by 65 feet rinks, among other improvements at the northern end of the park. In comparison, Gleis Rink costs $80,000 to $150,000 for a 2,000 to 4,000 square foot rink, the range of sizes most shopping malls use. Could a rink near your kitchen sink be far behind? In December, Kimberly Clavin, 45, a products engineer in Columbus, Ohio, had a Christmas surprise for her nine and 12-year-old sons, a 9-foot by 13-foot glyce rink in their investment. And that has been Reading the Times for Sunday, February 2nd, 2020.